Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, in the past and recently, uh, I received questions about the motor uh, experiment with the Arduino driving a motor, and it uses an N-channel MOSFET to drive a motor. Um, and it's difficult to try to figure out what the problem is um, remotely. You know, I don't know how you've wired the circuit. I don't know what your parts are, uh, level of experience. It's, it's, it's difficult to troubleshoot something like that uh, just by leaving comments. But one thing you might want to uh, do to approach it is simplify the problem by breaking it into pieces. And for that particular uh, motor experiment, we're just turning the MOSFET on and off with one of the pins output pins of the Arduino. So you can take the Arduino out of the equation to just try to get your motor circuit working separately. And then once you have the motor working, then you can concentrate on the code or the wiring for your Arduino. I also get, let me back up for a second, I also get questions about the ground, uh, why you have to have uh, the grounds connected, having a common ground between the Arduino and your circuit. And uh, we'll get into that too. So here's the circuit that the Arduino uh, hooks up to, to turn that motor on and off. So again, it's just uh, an N-channel MOSFET. And we have this protection diode here for back EMF protection. It's really not necessary. These are experiments. These aren't, you know, consumer electronics level where we have to make sure that, um, you know, it's going to be re reliable and, uh, and work. Uh, th these are just simple principles we're trying to get to work here. So we've got the N-channel MOSFET, and I've got a 9-volt battery that I'm hooking up to the positive and the negative rails here. And I've taken, I've taken two 10K resistors in series. That way I can just split that voltage and get a 4.5 volts that I can apply to the gate to turn the motor on and off. So here's the 9 volt battery. And I want to show you something interesting here. So with the N-channel MOSFET, the channel is of N material and the gate is P material. So if you apply, apply a negative voltage to the gate, you will actually shut down the path from drain to source, uh, the flow of le uh, electrons or electricity, essentially shutting down or turning off your motor. If you apply a positive voltage to the gate of this end channel, uh, you will turn this gate on. But there is a, an ambiguous state too, and that's if you leave it floating, where it has no reference on the gate. It, 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 it's allowed to float, and it's not hardwired to either a positive voltage or a negative voltage. And I'll show you how uh, this reacts when uh, you have that uncertainty as to what the gate is connected to. So let's hook up. Oops, 9 volt battery. I'm going to have to back this off a little bit. You can just see this here. Hook up the 9 volt battery. So there's no on and off switch here. Uh, this is going through a voltage divider. So here I have a little diagram here. So here I just have voltage divider with two 10k resistors and I, I can tap off of that and get uh, 4.5 volts which is close enough to a 5 volt logic level which you get from the Arduino uh, when you turn an output pin on and off and here's the symbol for um, a FET it's not a MOSFET but it's the basic symbol for a field effect transistor this particular transistor is an IRF520. It's an N-channel MOSFET. And I've got the motor here and the 9-volt battery and the source to ground. 
So this is constantly draining current because I don't have an on and, on, on and off switch, but it's going through two 10K resistors. So the gate is pin one. It's, it's gate is pin one. Uh, pin two is the drain and pin three is the source. The source is connected to ground right here through this green wire. And this is off, right? But look what happens when I just put my fingers, it's on. It's, it's on, but it's not like really on. It's kind of slow. And you say, well, maybe your battery's kind of low. Well, I have nothing connected to, see that? I put my finger on the, what? what? There's a couple of levels here. How, how am I increasing the speed? I have no variable uh, resistor here or a means of, I'm not pulse width modulating the gate. Whoa, I've got another level. That's kind of odd. So let me take this, the gate here, and put it down to ground. It's off. It's hardwired wired to ground now. This yellow wire is my 4.5 volts I'm taking from the junction uh, of the two 10K resistors there. So as you can see there, it's off. It's really off. I put my finger on this MOSFET. There's no ambiguity. It's off. Let me take the red wire off again. And now it's floating. Whoa. That was different from the last time, right? It kind of scared me there for a second. I'm grinding my finger there. But that's really pumping. So let's turn this off again. Okay. Now what did I touch? See? Non-repeatable. Can I get it to start? Nope. Hmm. That's at a slower. So it's, it's all this amb amb ambiguous levels of activity going on here, not even repeatable. Depending on how many times I touch this, I'm actually getting to go slower and faster. So now, I mean, is that how you want a, a motor to run? You don't know what it's going to be doing? So let's take this yellow wire and hook it up to the gate. It has positive 4.5 volts. Here we go. So that's really cranking and there's no no ambiguity. Is that getting a little bit warm? No, not really. So that's on. Let's turn it off. I've removed the 4.5 volts and it's still cranking. I have to turn it off by grounding the gate. There, it's off. Now let's take, let me disconnect this so I don't drain the battery completely. Let's take a look at why this is. So an end channel FET or MOSFET uh, can almost be thought of as two diodes that are sharing the end material or the end side um, of the diode. They have that in common. So you have the gate is made up of P material, P semiconductor material. And we have the, the drain and the source. And you put a positive voltage on the drain and a negative voltage on the source. In this case it's ground. So this is positive with respect to ground and current will flow and current has a path to flow from positive to ground. So we can either look at it like that or, I don't know, little electrons 
flowing down to ground. They have a nice clear path to make it through this N material which has an excess of electrons in it so the current can flow without any restrictions. Now what happens is if we put a negative voltage on the gate, a negative voltage with respect to the source, we start to turn off this channel. We start to restrict the flow of electrons, the path that it has to go from the drain to the source starts to get squeezed or turned off like you would turn off a faucet and restrict the flow of water. So here we have the same diagram except I'm applying, I have the two symbols for say uh, a battery of a certain value, doesn't matter, it's just in general if the voltage from gate to source is negative right a region starts to get developed here that restricts the flow of electrons and as you increase this negative voltage this region starts to expand it starts to expand to a point where it's going to touch and combine and it blocks the ability of electrons to go from the drain to the source. So we have, I'm showing two separate, you know, these are tied together in actuality. It's not two separate batteries that I would need or two separate voltages. But as long as the voltage from gate to source is negative, or the, or the voltage on the gate is negative with respect to the source, this field starts to increase and starts to turn off the ability or the pathway of electrons to flow from the drain to the source. So in the next diagram, I'm just adding plates to the battery to sort of indicate that the voltage has increased. And what has happened now is these two regions have joined together and they've essentially blo are now blocking the pathway of electrons to flow from drain to source turning this off so in, a, in essence you now have a switch that is open from voltage on the drain to the source and you don't have the ability of electrons to get to the source so it's turned off. So if you put a motor, if you then put a motor in this pathway, electrons in, uh, are not going to be able to flow through the motor and the motor is off. But what happens is if you do not, if you, if you keep this, if you have this floating This is just, if the gate is just floating, the voltage on the gate can fluctuate with respect to the source. This, this voltage is just, it's moving up and down. And, you know, even if you get near it, uh, you can get it, you can start creating this field, expanding and collapsing. Um, so you have to have your reference is connected. Um, these two circuits, the motor circuit and the Arduino circuit, have to have the same ground. They have to be on the same page as, as to what ground is and what the reference is. Because if this is not connected, if the ground here is different from the ground here, you can have you know, five volt level here and a zero here on the Arduino. And if you have a five volts here and a ground 
level here, this zero will be positive with respect this, this zero can look positive with respect to this because this is lower than this voltage. You know, so you have to have, between the two, you have to have a ground reference that both circuits are agreed to, that that is the same. It's the same with the Arduino and the same with the motor, so you don't get this ambiguity Everybody's on the same page as to what the 5-volt five, five voltage level is and what the zero or the ground is. So, and also uh, to address the, the problem, uh, if your circuit is not working, try to break it up into pieces, into manageable pieces. Put the Arduino aside, work on the Arduino separately, work on the motor circuit. Uh, if your motor circuit is not working, you could even take out the motor, get a diode to work properly. If you can turn the diode on and off, and then you can get the Arduino to turn a diode on and off, then you could step up to uh, building your little MOSFET circuit. And if you can get the motor to turn on and off with the proper gate voltage and have it off with the gate uh, negative and have it on with a positive voltage on the gate, then it's just a matter of combining the Arduino to your motor and um, you, you should be able to get it to work from that point on. Now remember, you, uh, the grounds are very important and the voltages, you have to be certain that both circuits uh, are on the same same page when it comes to an understanding of what their grounds are and what the voltages are that they're using so you don't get this ambiguity. So again if I unground the gate I start to touch this it's not at full speed um, it's on but it's not completely on. And look at that. It's, it's almost like I have speed control on this. But, and you can see that it's just, you know, there's all types of fields and strange things going on here when you aren't to agreement as to what voltages are, are, are being used. So you have to have a nice solid voltage on the gate. So if I put the five volts on here, then I know, well, it's, it's, it's uh, 4.5 volts because it's a um, voltage divider here, dividing the nine volts, that's on. And it, there's no ambiguity. There's a constant 4.5 volts on that gate. And if I then ground it, it's off. So if you found this video interesting, feel free to like, subscribe, and or comment. Uh, I hope this has helped and answered some of your questions. Thanks for watching.